uh, including DeRoy Murdoch, Joe Borelli, and uh, Kirsten Hagelin. Let me start with you, Kirsten. Uh, uh, it, you know, Dan Bongino makes a point. Uh, uh, UK, one of our oldest, closest allies, are saying, "Golly, this is amazing that someone would actually leak uh, uh, photos uh, of this of the crime scene, the Manchester massacre, and the New York Times would leak it." Uh, and, and again, you have two prongs of this so-called deep state right there: someone on the inside in the mainstream media, and but at this particular point, they put lives at risk. They put an investigation into in, at jeopardy. Absolutely. And you know what? It plays really well, actually, for the Trump administration, because formerly the concern about leaks had been pertaining to the Russian investigation. But now this is about national security and our closest allies. So he's able to really use that to press for this investigation. And it doesn't make it look personal. So there, you know, in, in some good way, if you're looking for a silver lining, there is that, that this, this will be taken more seriously. And, but at the end of the day, even with Steve Bannon coming in and, and them talking about, you know, really going after this, you know, this real assault, you know, that they are facing in the deep state, um, we have to make sure that we keep the focus not on who is, you know, driving the most headlines and who's creating the best narrative here, but what's best for the security of the American people. And leaks are bad for everyone, and they undermine that trust that has really been lost in the last year that Americans have in the media and in our government. Right, but we know leaks are a weapon, and it's just one of the many weapons that are being used by these the large bureaucracies out there. We saw uh, the, the Trump uh, budget. And they're talking about massively slashing some of these bloated agencies. And I guess when you start talking about taking $20 billion from the department of that and another $15 billion from a department of that, that goes to someone's pocket. That, that's power. That's money, DeRoy. And they push back. They do push back. And look, if, if somebody is talking about the reduction in the budget for the uh, EPA, I don't think there's a lot of classified data there. But uh, if you're talking about uh, spilling out uh, what the uh, prime minister or president of uh, or prime minister of uh, Australia said to President Trump, all these leaks about Manchester. Uh, this is classified stuff. This shouldn't be discussed. I think it would be very helpful to have Attorney General Jeff Sessions give a speech about leaks, the damage they do, what the penalties are, and promise that anybody caught doing this will be sent to jail to do hard time and make license. Well, the White House put out a and we need prosecutions. Right and there jail you go. The White House put out way. a statement about going after prosecutions. That was music to my ears, but I don't know that the so-called deep state cares so much about speeches. I mean, they're about action, and so far. They have been on the offensive. That's what I'm talking about here. Well, then we need some people in handcuffs. I think we, we saw some leakers being put in handcuffs and put in the back of squad cars. I think people would, would clam up at last. Joe, you were involved with the Trump campaign in New York. Um, there's some speculation that even there are even folks who are close to him who have greater allegiance to the deep state than to, to Donald Trump, the will of the people, and his agenda. Yeah, and it's very problematic. Look, I mean, we, we see this where it's not even necessarily classified information, but just as you pointed out, confidential information. How can anyone, whether it's a president or anyone on the highest level of the White House, engage in serious conversations with counterparts overseas if they believe the context and the contents of those conversations are going to be uh, d disclosed? This is something that President Trump has been talking about going back now to, to February and March of this year. Even John Brennan testified this week pre-Manchester about the dangers of leaks. But up until the, the context that Manchester provided, we really didn't see any serious discussion in the media about it. So what, what do you, where do you see, uh, 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 you know, again, it's speculation, there's all kinds of talk. That next week, when President Trump comes back, there's going to be hell to pay. Uh, that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that some people are going to be tossed out, that there are going to be some revelations about who, are, who these leakers actually are, maybe as many as three of them, and that they're going to go on the offensive, they're going to prosecute people, they're going to point out people. Jeff Sessions, Steve Bannon, is this, is this what's needed? Do we actually need the White House to fight this? Because there's a war going on. Do we need them to fight back? Oh, they absolutely need to fight back. And I think there might be some additions to the cabinet as well. And, you know, they need to for the sake of the messaging on the legislative end of the, what they actually want to do, what they want to get done. But you know what would help if you didn't see people like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange lifted up as heroes in this world? You know, a lot of people, they just want to leak so that they can get their 15 minutes of fame or they want to, you know, be lifted up as this social justice hero, and they're not. They're endangering people's lives, and they should be looked at as such. DeRoy, how do you see it working out? Because I think the, the, one of the points that Kirsten made is, is critical. The legislation seems to have gotten bogged down. The Trump agenda seems to have gotten bogged down in all of this. And again, we're talking about the swamp. It's a murky place to begin Absolutely. with. Uh, you know, you don't want to make it even tougher to get uh, to pass through things. Yeah, I had a conversation earlier this week with uh, someone who said, well, I guess, we, I guess we've lost the House now. Unbelievable, the level of, of defeatism that exists there. Look, the best way to get people reelected next year, Republicans to get reelected, is for them to do their jobs. They need to 
be governed. Uh, as long as this investigation goes on, there's no reason the House can't vote on legislation. There's no, no reason the Senate can't vote on legislation. The best thing Republicans can do to get back on track is do their jobs. Vote on legislation, put as much as they can on, on President Trump's desk, get things signed, and as the economy picks up and things get moving, I think uh, people will feel a lot better, and a lot of this negativity will, will start to lift. So are you confident that someone like a Paul Ryan, who, uh, you know, is a, an establishment politician, is the, is the guy that, that can lead this? Uh, because I think he's got a mixed track record right now at best. Look, he's certainly getting a lot of pushback uh, within his own party, not just from sort of the Trump wing of the party. He has no choice but to deliver, and uh, unfortunately, with some of the distractions... Would you say media, he's part of the deep state? Would you go that far? I wouldn't go that far and, and accuse him of, of, of undermining the president intentionally, but you're undermining the president's agenda by not passing the legislation that the Republican Party was elected to pass. That's worse in many ways than some of the leaks we've seen, because that's what the voters are going to judge the Republican Party on. Uh, we saw yesterday a win, but we might not see the same thing in 2018. All right, guys, thank you uh, very much. Well, you know, he wants...